It is a pretty dank and miserable afternoon here in Hertfordshire, but I thought it'd be nice to just get out and enjoy some time with wildlife. So what I've done is I've got my new hide here. Um, this is the uh, Tregopan uh, Hockey 3, Hokey 3. Um, it's a ground level hide uh, that's really nice, it's kind of like a bivy uh, kind of tent hide. And I've got a little spot up on the corner that I'm going to go try it out on. Should give me a nice low angle for some possible photography. I know there's some hares running about up there, some deer, so you never know, we might get lucky, but uh, it's always just nice to be out and enjoying the good old outdoors. Right. So when it comes to using hides, there's a couple of things that you want to consider uh, before you head out uh, and just get cracking. Now the first thing of course is to make sure that the location that you want to put your hide, you have permission to access. Um, the local farm here, you know, I've spoken to the landowner, I have permission to set my hides up uh, in this area, so it's absolutely fine. Um, people always ask me like, how do you get permission for stuff like this? Well, just go and ask, like knock on the door, say hey, um, you know, offer them some pictures, uh, a crate of beer, whatever, and you'd be surprised how far that gets you um, to finding new locations and land that you can work on. Now moving forward from that, um, today I'm setting up a hide you know, pretty much in the midday uh, to wait for the afternoon period. It's not the perfect way to do it. Most of the times that I'm using hides and working um, kind of long installed kind of photography, I'll come scout out a location just with my binoculars, something like that, work out where I'm going to position myself. I'll then come back, build the hide, put it in position, um, working out where the shots will be, uh, the distance from my subjects, etc. And then I'll come back a couple of weeks later to then use that hide. The wildlife's going to be far more accustomed to the hide. It's going to come a lot closer. It's just going to be used to the presence of um, whatever kind of structure you're using. Now today is a little bit different because I've got a new hide. One of the things I wanted to do this afternoon was just get out and test out how it goes up, you know, make sure I'm comfortable putting it up quickly, um, knowing just how it works together so that when I go and use it, maybe I'm out early morning where it's pitch black and I've just got a head torch, you want to be able to just do it easily um, with no fuss so you can just get ready and make the most of any wildlife encounters. So it is good to just get out and practice. That's pretty much what I'm going to do today. You know, conditions aren't great, but you never know. I know that hares can often just run down this edge, so a hide in position might give me some opportunities for photography. So uh, let's go set it up and see what it's like. Right, so I've got to the position where I think I'm gonna probably put the hide in. I'm just looking along here. You can see that the edge here, got a nice grass edge. There's a very obvious track that runs down. Now that's from the fallow deer and also the hares use it as well. There's lots of little breaks in the vegetation all the way through. And this is where the hares dart through the hedge and also the um, deer push themselves through as well. Now one thing I am noticing, for today especially, is that there's a lot of red wings and field fares about. And they're probably after these berries that are in the trees here. So what I'm probably going to do is set the hide a little bit further this way than I thought. Um, I was going to set it right at the end of the hedge line, um, you know, to get everything moving. But I think with these berries here we might get some extra um, possible wildlife. So I'm going to move it a bit further down and see if that works out rather nicely. But as it's starting to rain, I better get cracking. Right. Well, I think here looks pretty good for my position. Got some berries up on the side. I can see the whole way down the field and across the field this side as well. That means that I've got more opportunities for photography. Um, yeah, the light's gonna come that way. If it ever breaks, it probably won't today. And so the rain is also coming across this way. That means I won't get it coming into my lens. That should be good. So uh, let's see what we've got inside this bag. Now, camera wise today, I'll just run through it quickly. Um, I've got the Nikon D4. Um, new addition uh, in lockdown, just because when conditions are often like this, that low light performance is really nice. And also I'm gonna be using it as a remote camera. That's why I added it to the bag. Um, it was also only 600 pound, that is an absolute steal. Um, so yeah, I've got that. I've also got the D850 with me, and then the Z6, of course, that's filming me, that we might use for video if some subjects turn up. But right now as I'm getting wet, um, let's get in the hide. Right, so I've got it all out of the uh, bag, and as you can see, it's got this kind of like mechanism that folds out, and you just simply like pull that, and there you go. So the hide is ready. You put this top bit over the top. Now I've pre-clipped that on, because that usually um, comes separate in the bag, but I sorted that at home to make it a bit easier out in the field, and then you just clip them down the sides. 
but it's pretty easy really. And that's ready to go. And then if I go around the other side, just make sure that's nice and waterproof, looking good. They can see that this is a really low level hide. Uh, that's what it's for, that kind of ground level photography that I really like. Um, and it's got a little pole at the back. And so when I stretch this out, I should be able to lay down pretty comfortably inside. That's really quite good. Now I'm not the tallest, I'm about 5'10". Uh, so for anyone who's super tall, uh, it might be a bit smaller for you, but uh, I think this is gonna be a pretty comfortable place to spend some time photographing. Now I just need some pegs, because of course, the moment you start filming something, it starts raining and gets a bit more windy, of course. Now one of the things I do like about these hides is they come with multiple options for the front. So this bit has a little snoot that you can put your uh, lens through, but it's also got the kind of mesh camo net that I kind of prefer for this sort of stuff. Um, makes it a bit easier and you can see out at the same time. You also have a little um, pole that goes around the front and one that goes through the middle of the hide of the back. Um, they lift the canopy up so you can look out without it getting in the way all the time. Um, that's really quite nice as well. Right, I'll stick that in and get this sorted and get inside because I'm getting wet. Just gonna put final few pegs in. I'm not gonna fully peg it out because obviously I take it down and I'll be inside it. So just pop this one in, nice and secure. And then put the front post in as well. Keep the rain off. Everything's set up and ready to go. Now to get in, now to get in. Um, basically, just side zipper that runs the whole way along the side. Um, and it's up here. And then you'll see inside, it's basically like a low level tent that's perfect. So I can get in there, I've got a ground sheet as well, so not gonna get wet, but I have got my sleeping mat with me. When you're kind of working on the ground, it's so much nicer to have a mat. It just means you're so much more comfortable uh, for long periods of time. So I'm gonna blow that up and get it in and then we'll get in the hide. Lunch, of course. Always store your wellies upside down. Everything's in. And just lay down. Nice. Right, so I'm set up in my hide, ready to go. Um, shooting position is quite comfortable, really, especially with my mat. It makes such a big difference to the warmth you get from the ground. Uh, then I've got the D4 set up on the end with a 1.4 teleconverter. Uh, that's the tripod is pushed right to the front of the hide. Just makes it really comfortable, keeps it out of the hide, you know, less in the hide, more comfort for me. And then I got my camera bag down at the end, um, basically just to get it out of the way. Um, it's really nice, you know, I'm five foot 10, and so, you know, I don't touch it with my feet. That's quite nice, so really good amount of space. You know, if you're like six foot four, then yeah, it'll be a bit more cramped, but really nice uh, to be able to do that. Lunch is ready to go, and then a few little accessories here. Um, I always keep them in my uh, lens coat uh, cover. Uh, the end of the lens cover just keeps everything nice and tidy. The FTZ adapter, if I want to mount the Z6 to the camera for some video later on. But as it's oh, just so overcast and dull today, I don't know what we're going to get. But I have seen some red wings and fill fairs, so you never know. We might get some opportunities. But right, I better get back to it and. Uh, quite a down. Right then, so I've been in the hide for about three hours now and uh, yeah, it's quite nice in here. I'm pretty well protected from the elements. I haven't got wet from the rain that has been hammering down this afternoon. Um, there's a tiny bit of condensation that to be honest, is pretty normal for a very small and cramped like 
bivy hide like this, but actually it's really well managed because there's very good ventilation at the front, the top, and down at the bottom that really is quite nice. It's a little bit cooler than I expected. Um, usually these hides get really, really warm, but again, that ventilation um, is just keeping the airflow through. Um, I'm protected from the elements, but I think next time a sleeping bag wouldn't go amiss, especially if I'm here um, early mornings that I'll probably use this hide for. Um, shooting position is really nice. I've got good visibility out of all of the, um, the different kind of windows and stuff. Um, would like to have this moved up a bit, um, but then again, because it's raining, I've got to keep the lens uh, shielded and protected, but that's absolutely great. Um, other than that, it's a really nice space to be working and taking some pictures. Haven't had too much luck um, photographically today, but I kind of didn't really expect to. There's been some Red Wings field fairs, um, but I have seen a buzzard off over the back, but other than that, it's been pretty sparse. Um, but that's okay, you know, you, you have to have these days as a photographer. If you had days where, you know, everything always happened, photography would actually get quite boring. So it is quite nice um, to just kind of see nothing on the odd day. Um, so that's pretty good. But what I'm going to do, I've got about half an hour's light left, I reckon. So I'm just going to chill here for a bit, see if I see anything else. I've got the coffee that will probably be my next uh, port of call. Always leave it to the absolute, you know, last minute try and push it off as long as possible because otherwise once it's gone you really just wish it was back so i might treat myself to that in a moment but other than that that's probably going to be it for today um i hope you found that a nice little look behind the scenes of uh sort of what i'm doing i'll probably be using this hide in the future uh for other projects you know getting finding a location putting it in and then coming back to it uh, a few days later to get some shots um, I think it's going to work quite well. If you've got any questions about the hide, of course, drop them in the comments below. Um, I'll put all the details there as well about it um, if you're interested. Um, and of course, if you've got any general wildlife photography questions, of course, drop them down there. And for future content, be sure to like and subscribe. But until the next one, guys, get out there, get shooting, enjoy your wildlife photography, and I'll see you soon.